What's up, everybody? Long time no see. Sorry about the absence. Uh, got a little caught up in my personal life, my day job. But I am back. Um, the content you know and love, the content you subscribe for is coming back, and it's coming back better. Uh, first of all, to all my subscribers that are watching this video today and haven't unsubscribed, and the people that have subscribed during my absence, I love and appreciate all of you. And... Although I haven't published any videos, I have still been reading your comments, responding to your comments, and all of your input, feedback, and all the stuff you guys have been doing to help each other. I am so thankful for it, and I have kept it all in mind, and moving forward, you will see that I do indeed listen to you guys. Um, I've been gone, but as you can see by the artwork on the channel, I have still been working on the channel. Um, I have a lot of videos to push for you guys i have a lot of updates to push um the channel's been updated the website is gonna be updated the samurai.tech uh i made this this website initially because when we dropped the home assistant ssd install we were in the beta stages of that build uh you had to go through some hoops to set this thing up and that's that's why i started this channel uh i couldn't find any good info on this i had to dig through several forums and several other videos just to kind of figure out what was going on here and and we've grown so much um we have an official build now this stuff is more streamlined and let's go right to what the uh, point of the video today is this is not just a welcome back video for myself um this was this was awesome when it came out like this was this was game changing we went from having to use an sd card which was super unreliable now we can use technology that we use in the 21st century we're using ssds that is a step in the right direction and a great great thing for smart home technology but now we've done one better uh my initial when i came back i wanted to put a video out for you guys about the raspberry pi compute module 4 i wanted to make a video about this because this let me explain to you first what this is this is the brains of a raspberry pi 4 it's the brains of a Raspberry Pi 4. That's all it is. But it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles. It doesn't have ports. It doesn't have GPIO pins. It has nothing. It's just the brains. But what you do is you buy a carrier board. And, and why is this relevant? And why is this about to be super relevant in two minutes? Well, with these carrier boards... Well, let me, let me step back, actually. Forget the carrier boards. Forget the compute module. The Raspberry Pi 4, we're hooked up to an SSD. But what happens is... We're hooked up to an SSD. We're hooked up to our USB 3 port. It's ugly. It's not the best setup, but it's actually not even achieving the full speeds. We're bottlenecked. The way the Raspberry Pi 4 is set up, the USB 3 is bottlenecked. Um, you can't reach the full potential on an SSD drive. We have reliability and, and we have speed over an SD card, but you are still bottlenecked. We are not fully in the 21st century. With the compute module, you're able to get a carrier board and this thing supports a PCIe bus, which means no more bottleneck. Not only no more bottleneck, no more ugly carriers. And you know what? Let me just get right to the point. Eighth birthday of Home Assistant, and the Home Assistant founders have dropped us another gift from the gods. Last year, we got the Home Assistant Blue. This year, we got the Home Assistant Amber. And by this year, I kind of mean next year. But it just looks like a Raspberry Pi 4 with a clear case, right? absolutely wrong this is a carrier board for a raspberry pi compute man i'm i'm so excited for this I, i'm so hurt that we gotta wait a good year but let me let me break down why this is so amazing now uh i wanted to make a video for y'all with the carrier board but it's, it's a little difficult right now because the people making them are, are small operations and if you've tried to buy anything from a gaming console to a car during the pandemic, you know that there is a chip shortage and everything is overpriced and it's undersupplied. So for for Home Assistant to be doing this, regardless if we have to wait for a year, is awesome. But anyway, why is this awesome? Well, this carrier board is made with us in mind. Um, just to have this M2 expansion slot, which allows you to take advantage of that PCI Express bus, which, if you're not, you know, a nerd, look, you're getting the full speed that you paid for. And not only that, you don't have to have your, your big old SSD anymore. You can get an M2 
an M2 uh, drive and just plug it in here. And look, how far have we come? We, we went from an external enclosure just taking up half our rack space or just making a, an ugly scene on our desk or whatever. And now it's like a stick of RAM in there. And uh, let me step back. And, and before we get to the other parts that are even more mind-blowing, you don't even have to buy the compute with this. You buy your bare board, and this is the one I'm going to get. Uh, I'm just going to put that out there. This is the one I'm going to get. But uh, if you buy it with the board, you get the 2 gigabyte RAM version. If you buy it without the board, you can buy an even bigger one. You can customize this thing to your heart's content. But why is this even better? Oh, my God. Does that say Zigbee? And Zigbee with Matter compatibility? This thing is not only getting rid of another eyesore uh you know when we set up our zigbee if you follow my channel or you know even if you're on other channels and you've seen the combi sticks and whatever we use the the go control stick but you, you need a leash for it you need a, a three foot extension cord and you got a dongle and the dongle's moody and it's hanging out and it's it's just all kinds of ugly and i mean we love it but this is way better it's built in it's another thing we don't have to deal with but uh, what what can make this even better? Oh, they're killing me right now. Power over Ethernet. What this means for you is if you have a router or a switch with power over Ethernet, which if you're an enthusiast in this stuff, I would recommend it to the fullest because you should probably have a wireless access point that uses PoE or a camera that uses PoE or something that uses PoE. So you should either have an injector or a router or a switch, but... What this means for the uninitiated is that you don't need the wall wart anymore. Instead of a power adapter, you just plug in your old network cable, your Ethernet cable, and this thing powers up. You know, considering you had all the prerequisites that we already mentioned. So this little board has everything we've wanted, and it put it into a small form factor. Like, this is just awesome. I mean, it's... This is amazing. And like I said, it's compatible with some future-proof Zigbee stuff here. Not to mention the M2 port. It's just... I love it. I really love it. But anyway, not to take up too much more time because you guys like these videos because they're to the point and I'm not going to change. But uh, I may, because of the long lead-in time i may try to source some carrier boards and try to figure out an alternative for you guys before then uh as far as the next video we're going to be using an old raspberry pi 4 all reliable and i'm going to be adding a ups hat to it what this is going to do for you guys is when the power goes out sometimes you might lose data or something will get messed up you know this thing is so finicky but with a ups it's a battery backup when the power goes out your hub your raspberry pi will not go down it'll give you time to shut down properly you're gonna love it so look forward to that look forward to maybe a home assistant amber prequel and just keep watching like subscribe and keep commenting uh i appreciate all of you hopefully you guys appreciate the videos and i will see you in the next one